Good morning, folks. It's my privilege today to uh, bring this uh, message to you. I guess you would call it a message, but uh, as most of you know, for the last few weeks, we've been doing testimonies, and uh, we were privileged to have Pastor Marks last week, and what a blessing that was. Think about several of the other uh, men and women that gave their testimonies a week prior, and then we started off with our Mother's Day weekend, and so it's been a blessing. And uh, still continuing to have some people uh, tell me that they would like to give their testimony. But I thought it would be very fitting tonight for their evening service that your pastor give his testimony. I know that uh, many of you have heard about how God called me here. But tonight I feel like um, that the Lord is telling me that I should be willing to testify what he did in my life to get me to the point to where I am right now. And so I want to be able to share that with you. And I, my hopes are that as we move forward, that there'll be others that will be willing to step forward and say that I would like to share what God's done in my life also. Uh, I think it's powerful, and I think it's wonderful for these testimonies to come about, and so we're looking forward to that. As you can tell, we're in my office today, and uh, I chose to be here today because this is where I spend a lot of time, um, probably in and out of here, but these days spend a little bit more time in studying and preparing. And uh, kind of got a different angle today that I want you to see. Normally, I sit on the other side of the desk and uh, give our public service announcements of information to the church. But today, I want to sit here. It's a fairly comfortable position. But I just want to talk to you just a little bit and just share with you what God's done in my life. I want to start off today by reading a passage of Scripture out of the book of Philippians. It's in uh, chapter 2, and it begins with verse 5. And perhaps someday, I may preach on this passage here because... Uh, Many years ago, as most of you know, I was a civil servant, being a police officer, and I got the greatest civil servant over the, this passage here, and it was Jesus. And so uh, I want to start off today with this. It says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, or should bow, of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, folks, that's what I want to share with you today. I feel like it's my time now to be able to share with you to the glory of God what He's done in my life. I was born of a simple family. My dad was a police officer. My mother, uh, young, working in the hosiery mill. We didn't realize how poor we were, but we were happy. Uh, we had a wonderful upbringing. We bought our first house, and we lived on McDermott Street. We lived a very simple life. Uh, we would have a 50-pound pack of potatoes to feed all these youngins, and then we would buy uh, pinto beans, and uh, we eat those, and we had a lot of milk gravy, and we made biscuits a lot and had loaf bread, and so that's pretty much why I'm the size I am to this day. But uh, we, we did not go hungry, and uh, the Lord blessed us and helped us through some very tight times. Now as I look back, I didn't realize, but most of us were all in the same shape, same condition. But we lived a happy life. I was a happy little boy. And my memory first goes back to when my grandmother would come and take me or my mother would take me down to Franklinville. And my first memory of being in church was at Franklinville Methodist Church. And the first gospel songs that I ever heard in my life were heard in that church. I'm sad to say this, but my brother and I were talking not too long ago, and uh, we both agreed that we have no memory as a family of attending church together. My mother, dad, my brother and sisters, uh, I just don't have much of a memory of very many times us being in the house of God together. And, um, and I didn't know the Lord, and I was just a little boy when I was there. I was in God's hands, but I remember that's the first places that I learned about Jesus loves me and Jesus loves the little children and all those songs and so it's very special to me and my grandmother took me there. Otherwise, there on McDermott Street, uh, we had a friend that lived just down the road. Uh, her husband actually played softball with my dad and, uh, and uh, every day Barbara Winslow would come up and pick us up. 
uh, my brother and I got us a suit and we would stand at the edge of the roadway and we would wait each morning and uh, she would come by and she would take us to Oakhurst Baptist Church. And I remember Preacher Hughes was there. And I really didn't understand what was going on, didn't understand uh, everything, but for the first time I was kind of put into a Sunday school class and a lot of things kind of thrown at us and we really didn't understand, but we were baptized there and I didn't know what I was doing. But, but that's the first time that I got to go to church on a fairly regular basis. And then uh, we had an almond family that moved in beside of us and they saw that uh, they would transport us to church also there at Oakhurst. And so they're special. These people are very special in my life because they introduced me to the house of God and allowed this little boy to be able to begin to have roots there and to begin to learn things. As life went on, we moved out into the country and we moved down into the Franklinville area school district. I attended Franklinville School and I met a young man who was my age and uh, he got saved and uh, I watched him every day at school and uh, he would bring his Bible and he would sit there at his desk and uh, during study hall he would read passages of scripture and he would study and I remember uh, people making fun of him. He was a nice looking guy, very athletic, very popular and he went from being very popular to being one of those that people kind of pushed aside because he was a Christian and he was not ashamed of it. But I remember watching him and I remember thinking, I'd like to be just like he is. I want what he's got. And so uh, he and I became very close friends and he would come and pick me up and he would take me over to Pleasant Cross Christian Church. there, just below Blue Mist there on 64. And um, I began attending church there and began to learn a lot. I was listening. I remember Adrian Pugh was uh, was basically our youth leader is right about the time that Adrian went off to college at Bob Jones. And I remember uh, him taking us up in the upper room up there above the church and he was teaching us how to pray and how to pray for the service. And still at that point, I didn't know the Lord. But I remember a youth revival that took place there at Pleasant Cross. And I sat there on one of those pews and for the first time in my life now as a kind of a middle years teenager, about 14, 15 years of age, for the first time, I began to really listen and take in that I was a sinner and that I was in need of a Savior. And I remember a story that the evangelist, and the evangelist was Lane Lohman. He was a uh, traveling evangelist at that time. And uh, Brother Lohman came and, and preached a message, and he shared with us a uh, fictitious story. And, uh, and he said, imagine if you would, all the greats of heaven were gathered together. And God was there, and of course Jesus was there also. And he said that as God was there, he said man has fallen into depravity. And he said there has to be a sacrifice made that they may live. Because they can't come to where we're at unless somebody's willing to lay down their life. And he said I need somebody to go for me. To be willing to die on a cross. And to give up their life and to shed their blood in order that these people might live. Well, as the story went, Moses raised his hand up and said, Father, I'll go. And he said, Moses, he said, you're a great man and you did wonderful things. But he said, you were not without sin. And he began to point out the things in his life where he had failed him. And Moses kind of dejectedly walked away. Joshua raised his hand and said, Lord, I'll go. I'll be willing to go. And yet God said, Joshua, as wonderful a person as you were and a great leader of the people, you still are not sinless and you're not perfect and you can't go either. So one by one, each one of them, from David to Moses to Joshua to Elijah, all these people volunteered, but none of them were able to fit the bill of what God was looking for. And then I remember the story went something like this. And you can imagine now, this was at a youth revival. And all of us were very young and teenagers in there, very impressionable years. And I remember him saying, a lone hand went up in the back of the crowd. And there was a hush came over all the people that were there that day. And they said, no, not him, not him. And that hand belonged to Jesus. And Jesus looked at God and he said, Father, I'll go. And I will be willing to lay my life down for these people. And people began to implore God, don't send your only son. Don't allow him to go. But I remember that night as I sat there at Pleasant Cross Christian Church 
for the first time in my life, I recognized the fact that Jesus willingly came. God said, it has to be my son because he's the only one that's without sin. He's the only one that is a pure sacrifice. And so for the first time, I recognized that Jesus came and he died for me and that he hung on that cross and shed his blood that a sinner such as myself might be saved. Folks, I remember that day as I went up to that altar and I cried out to God and I didn't know what to say or to do other than just ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart. And folks, I believe he did. Now for, for some time after that, it always bothered me, even into the later years, it's bothered me that I don't remember the exact date and time. And for many days uh, on end, uh, I would worry about that, thinking, well, did I really get saved because I don't even know what the day it was. And I hear a lot of people can tell you the day, the time, and the hour, but I just know that I got saved. But one day, going through some old papers, I found a baptismal sheet where I got baptized in one of the ponds behind Blue Mist, Trogdon Ponds. And I remember being baptized. Well, I found a piece of paper that signified that date. It was in 1972 when I got baptized into Jesus Christ that day, being willing to be identified with Him. And so it has just really encouraged my life as I move forward. And I've kind of put that behind me now because I trust by faith that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I remember that as one of the most significant times of my life because my soul was snatched out of the pit of hell that day because of my faith in what Jesus did for me. I graduated from Eastern Randolph, um, was able to begin to attend uh, another church, and uh, it was of a holiness branch. And, uh, of course, some little girl was the one that got me to go there, but God used them to get me to be able to hear the Word of God and to be able to grow. I ended up going to a uh, holiness college, Emmanuel College in Franklin Springs, Georgia. I graduated with my degree down there and uh, uh, laid a lot of the Christian foundation that I rely upon this day, upon the Word of God. Came back home, went to work, and... Uh, the Lord began to speak to my heart and began to call me and, and to tell me that uh, he believed he was directing me. I never thought I'd be a policeman like my daddy, but uh, I began to get that urge. And so I messed up by going and riding along. And the next thing I know, I had this, uh, this appetite for law enforcement work. And so in 1978, I joined the police department as a young man and went on there and then, of course, went on full time. And I have never regretted that. I've had a lot of people to this day say that uh, I believe you missed your calling. You should have been a preacher long ago, but I believe I found my calling. I believe that God sent me there for a reason, and I believe that he trained me and he helped me. I've always loved people. I've always loved helping people, and I've always been a person of, of peace. I certainly am not a perfect individual, and I have my temperaments and different things, too, that I have to deal with, but I've always loved dealing with people. I always loved helping them, and so law enforcement was a ministry to me, and I thought I had a very successful career in it. During that time, I be, uh, began to go to Crossroad Baptist Church, and down there at Crossroad, after a few years, uh, I was asked to teach a Sunday school class, and so 30 years later, after being a Sunday school teacher for 30 years, for serving as a deacon and being chairman of the deacons, it gave me a perspective on that side of the table of what it was like in serving the Lord and being in leadership. Um, as all of you know, that uh, in 1999, I was promoted to the position of Chief of Police there at Asheboro Police Department, and God allowed me to have that experience. And again, He was just preparing me for what I'm doing right now. So God has been with me all along, and He's blessed me. Also, during that time, God allowed me to meet the, the most beautiful thing that I'd ever seen, and that was my wife. I remember the first time that I saw her at the beach and, and I remember looking at her and just being taken by her beauty to me. And, um, and the thing about it is, is the more I got to know her, the more beautiful she became because she's so beautiful on the inside also. Not only was she pretty for me to look at, but she was pretty on the inside. And uh, this woman became my wife in 1987 and uh, it was three years later that we had our first child, Allison, our daughter. And then in 1994, we had our son. And so God blessed me with a wonderful family, and uh, I couldn't have asked for any more as we've raised them, as God has given me career, and, and as God has allowed me to, to take care of them. 
And so I was able to retire in 2008. And uh, I played golf for about three days a week for about two years. And the Lord began to speak to my heart and tell me that you need, you're need you young enough, you need to go back to work. And so uh, I was called to go to Crossroad Retirement Center. And for the next five years, I ministered in Jesus' name there to those old folks. Uh, I was able to be a chaplain or a do-it-all, whatever you want, drove the bus, ministered, took care of people, counseled, preached, did funerals, did weddings, I did all kinds of stuff down there. And uh, really didn't know where God was leading me. I began to preach and was doing evangelistic work and uh, just being able to use the gifts and abilities that I had learned from being a Sunday school teacher and from being a police chief and speaking in front of groups and, uh, and from working down there. But now as I look back on my life, I see how God has put all this together for such a time as this. I remember being notified uh, that Balfour Baptist Church was needing someone to help them out a little bit. And so I remember Steve Hedgepath, uh, he called me and uh, introduced himself to me. And Steve asked me would I consider coming to Balfour and, and being able to, to share it there and to help them through this time. They were without a pastor. And I said, I'll be glad to come. And so occasionally I would get that call from Steve and I can still, I actually can mimic Steve pretty good right now. And, uh, and I can sound kind of like him, but uh, I've heard Steve many a morning, especially on Thursday mornings, say, uh, Brother Gary, we need you to come. And would you be willing to come? And so that's how I got started. So I began to, to come up to Balfour and began to share, still preaching at various churches all over the county and uh, just going different places. And I really thought that uh, I was going to be an evangelist and uh, eventually would just be preaching maybe revivals and filling pulpits. But I uh, began to talk and then um, I got to, you know, got reacquainted with a, a good friend of mine that I knew from years uh, ago, Roger Pritchard. And I had dealt with Roger many times. Uh, in police work with him with the city schools and so Roger and I began to talk and one thing led to another and so the deacons led by Roger or, or the committee that was looking for a pastor asked me would I be willing uh, to come aboard and to uh, be able to be the interim here at Balfour knowing that I could not take this job full time but that I would just be an interim and so that's how I took this job. So for about uh, I guess it's about two and a half years um, I did interim work here, fell in love with the people, and I think the people got used to me, and I'd like to think that they fell in love with me also, but it was a wonderful relationship, and the church uh, seemed to be doing pretty good, but I had a lot of people tell me that we're not going to join until uh, you join one of these days. Well, I didn't think I was going to be joining here. I thought that God would have my time, and so actually, uh, probably, um, I guess it would have been January of 2017, I would have been finished here. And uh, I was planning on going back to Crossroad and then see where God would lead me. But uh, as things would have it, uh, the committee came back to me and the person that they were looking for uh, was no longer interested that God had told them not to come here. And so the committee, uh, Roger, I never forget the conversation that I have with Brother Roger and he said that the committee really had fell in love with you and they would like for you to reconsider and we'll make a way if you'd be willing to come that we can change that constitution. And so uh, I remember I began to pray about it and think about it and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I knew that God had led me here for a reason, but uh, I began to think about it and I began to really sense the presence of the Lord speaking to my heart. So I remember vividly one morning, about 5 o'clock in the morning, I got up and I uh, couldn't sleep. I got up, got dressed, and I went to a place for me that is peace. And it's where my daddy's buried, up at Oklahoma Cemetery. And I remember going that day and uh, parking my car and getting out, and I remember walking by and looking at my dad's grave, and his body is just laid there, but it's a place of quietness, and there's nobody out yet. And I began to walk. And I started walking around uh, the premises of that place and I began to pray. And I remember crying out to God and said, God, I know that you're speaking to my heart and I know that I've been offered this position and I don't know what to do. Lord, I've never been a pastor. I don't know how to pastor a church. I know how to do deacon work. I know how to teach. You've given me an ability to speak, but I've never pastored people. Yes, I've been a police chief. Yes, I've led men into battle 
or to arrest somebody. It's kind of like, uh, I guess, war. But, uh, but uh, I've led people into serious situations. But God, I've never ministered among your flock. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. But this much I know, that I want to do what you want me to do. And God, if you're telling me to go there, then Lord, I am willing to do what you've called me to do. And I just ask you to go with me and to help me. So folks, on January the 1st, pretty much close to that date, 2017, I preached my first sermon as a pastor at Balfour Baptist Church. I agreed to take this church because that's truly where God has led me to come. And when we did, I remember on the first Sunday, we had 17 people, I believe it was, including a lot of my family that all joined Balfour Baptist Church. And I have to remind my mama once in a while now that it was on that day that she joined Balfour. But uh, it's been a day that never looked back. A lot of friends joined at that time. And God has blessed. Just the other day, I was looking at one of the church roles and in the last three years from that day until now, until all this COVID-19 had hit, we were already at close to about 160 people that had joined over these past three years. God has blessed Balfour Baptist Church. God has blessed me. And God has blessed my ministry, even though every day I have to trust Him. So folks, I want you to know that my life today is one that has been orchestrated by God up to this point. Am I perfect? No. Do I fail Him sometimes? Yes. Do I want to do the right things? Yes. I reminded one of our members the other day that, you know, where the passage said, where he was telling Peter, James, and John, he said, be on your knees praying. Uh, be praying because temptation is out there and it's going to get you. Remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, but the Word of God says they fell asleep on him. Not once, twice, three times that they fell asleep. And sure enough, the tempter did come and tried to pull them away and attack them. And yes, he's attacked my life in different ways. But folks, I'm here to tell you today that I believe that God has raised me up, that God saved me as a young man, that God put people into my path, and God has taught me and trained me and, and, and allowed me to learn things today that are used up here in this church. I don't know how to do everything. I don't have all the answers. But God has given me the ability to love people. He's given me the ability to lead. And He's given me a heart for Him. And my, and my desire is to be more like Him each and every day. And I'm smart enough to realize that when I don't know what to do, that I know to run to Him. And so, folks, I am honored today to be the pastor here at this church. I am honored that it started a long time ago because uh, of, a, of a wonderful grandmother that today is saved and in heaven. I'm thankful for a grandmother that would took me to church and exposed me to the church. I'm thankful for that woman who I have since been able to go and tell her thank you for investing in a couple of little boys and getting us started in church. Today, both of those boys are born again. Today, both of those boys have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I reminded her just recently that one of those little boys today is a pastor at Balfour Baptist Church. That's how much influence she had. I think about when I was at Pleasant Cross of a woman who, who just uh, uh, gave of herself as my Sunday school teacher. Not a man, but a lady who gave of herself and taught me the Romans road and taught me how to lead others to Jesus. Well, that little boy that she was teaching that today is a pastor who has had the privilege of leading many to Christ. And, uh, and I don't say that from an arrogance or a prideful thing, but I thank God for those who have invested in my life. I think about a gentleman today who is dead and gone and lives in heaven today, Dan Cagle, who taught me for two years the, Navi the Navigator series on discipleship, teaching me to be a better witness for Christ and how to teach others about Him. I think about how people have poured into my life. I think about being at Crossroad and, and, and making friends with a man who was nearly 100 years old. He actually was 102 when he died. But the thing that that man poured into my life was the love of God. A simple man, how he poured into my life. And the list goes on and on. I think about uh, the friendship that I had with Stan Haywood, how Stan poured into my life at Crossroad. And I was always there to encourage me. So folks, my life has been one where God has put people in my path. I think about now when I'm here at Balfour of all these godly men that I've been around and the godly ladies that are here. 
I think about those who have talked to me and encouraged me. I think about Brother Dwight and, and so many of the others that have loved on me and cared for me. I think about Brother Steve Hatchpath, and I'll always remember his voice. I think about all those who have come to know Christ since I've been here. I think about uh, old Bobby Crisco, and I think about uh, the, the occasion that he and, Hat, he and I had that morning, that divine appointment that was down there before the service ever started. I think about the three or four or five that have came to the church office and said they need to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and then this very office, tears that have stained this floor because God has led me here to be with all of you. It ain't about me. It's about Him. It's about Jesus and Him being lifted up. And so, folks, I want you to know today that you have a pastor that is thankful and grateful for the love of God and for the mercy of God that he has took a simple young man and that he has guided him to this place today. And my prayer is that as I go forward that I'll be found faithful to Him that I'll be found faithful to preach the word, that I'll be found faithful to lead others to a saving knowledge of Christ. I'm honored to be here today. I'm honored to be your pastor. And yes, uh, I do love you. And I desire for us to be back together real soon. Now, I've got one other scripture verse that I want to share with you that, that I feel like is very important today. And uh, this again comes out of Philippians. It's in chapter 1, and it's just one verse of scripture. And it's... Uh, you know, basically, I, I guess what you say, my life has come just like everyone else here. We all have a story. And my life came from that little boy that was first in a, standing in a seat at Franklinville Methodist Church to a little boy that stood at the side of the road waiting to be picked up and taken to church to a little fellow that would catch a ride to Pleasant Cross to a young man who was able to take his own self to church and to be able to seek the Lord. Today I stand here and I share this. It says in verse 6 of chapter 1 of the book of Philippians, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So folks, my desire today for my life is I move forward in my life. And I pray that my children will watch this and see this and understand the heritage of the Lord and what he has done for their daddy that my wife can watch this and see what God has done in her husband and for what each one of you can do as your pastor, that what God has done in my life and where he has brought me to. And my prayer is that I'll be found faithful, that I'll run the race, and that I'll run it until he says that's enough and that he directs my path. I will never, ever retire from, from honoring and serving him. Yes, there'll come a day when I can no longer pastor a church the way that it needs to be. But until that day comes, I'm going to labor and give it all I got. And, um, and folks, I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful to be here. And I ask for your prayers. And it's an honor today to be here before you. And I pray that God blesses Balfour Baptist Church. And I pray that God will bless each one of you. And again, I thank God. And I pray that he'll receive this testimony today. That it will not be uh, honoring myself, but it will point everything to Jesus. Because, folks, I am nothing without him. And I can do nothing without Him. But with Him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you for this privilege. May God bless you. And as we move forward through this pandemic, may God lead us, protect us, and guide us. And you know what? He will. There's some good times waiting. It may be different than what we can imagine yet. Don't know what it'll be like. But we're trusting in Him. And I just want to tell you today that I love you. And I miss you. And I look forward to being back together with you. Thank you so much. The song I'd like to share with you tonight is a song that reminds me of a life-changing day many, many years ago when I was a child and we had been to church services that day as was our custom on a Sunday. And as we came home from church that day, I asked my mother, what it meant to be a Christian, how you became a Christian. Uh, the Lord had been really dealing in my heart and helping me to have, even in my child's mind and understanding, I had a conviction in my heart that I knew I needed a savior. I knew I had done things that needed forgiveness. 
and I knew I stood in need of God's mercy. And so that day, I asked my mother how I could become a Christian. And I will never forget her leaning over and getting face to face with me and telling me that I needed to acknowledge my need of God. I needed to acknowledge my need for forgiveness. I needed to acknowledge my sin. And I needed to go to God in prayer and confess my sin and my need for him. And I needed to acknowledge that what Jesus did for me on the cross was for me. It was to cover and cleanse me from all my sin. And then I needed to invite him to come into my heart and into my life to be my Savior and my Lord and receive him by faith and follow him for the rest of my life. Well, my mother went on and she really thought she had just kind of answered some questions for me. But I went back to my room and I will never forget getting down on my knees after I closed the door. And I did those things. I prayed the prayer asking Christ to come into my heart and into my life. And even though I was a child, I will never forget the feeling of joy that overcame me. I knew I was forgiven. I knew that Christ was now in my heart and in my life and that he would never leave me. And I remember the distinct feeling of joy that flooded my heart and flooded my soul. <clears throat> the next song that I want to sing is the song, He Touched Me. And it is a song that resonates with me because all those years ago, Jesus did touch me. And the word says that if we come to him as a child, he receives us. And that's what I did. And he has never left me. Been through a lot of ups and downs and difficulties and joys, but the truth of who Jesus is, his presence in my life, his guidance, his wisdom, his strength, his mercy, it's always been there. I've never been the same. And so if you want to share this song with me, you just sing along. If you don't have that assurance in your heart tonight that he has touched you and brought this joy to you that no one can ever take away, you can make that right with him tonight. Join me, he touched me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and made me Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while he turns. Tea roll. 
wanted to say thank you today for watching our service, our broadcast. I've done the best that I can today to preach the Word of God and to be able to share with you in a powerful way. And I just wanted to make sure that you understand that if you have any type of need that we can help you, any prayer concern that we can do, please contact us and let us know because we want to be a blessing to you. It's about the kingdom of heaven and it's about you and it's about being able to meet your needs. And so we just want to thank you today for choosing to come on our broadcast and to listen to what we have to say. And I just pray that God's been blessed and lifted up and honored. Uh, if you have a desire today to give to our ministry, and I can assure you that every dime that we ever receive will go to the full gospel ministry of getting the Word of God out to other people. So just hit the giving tab that's there on our web page, and, uh, and all that will just kind of guide you through it. So I just want you to know today that we're grateful to have you. And this is a tremendous part of our ministry right now that is going over the internet and people coming to our website. We're excited about what God's doing. We're excited about what He's going to uh, do through this effort here. And so anyway, I just want you to know that we want to be a blessing to you. Please join us again. We look forward to that.